Dan kami akan lanjutkan dialog kita di Prime World CNBC Indonesia bersama dengan Mr. Rajendra Arial, FAO Country Director and Representative to Indonesia and Imor Leste. Mr. Rajendra, thank you so much for still being here with us in CNBC. Thank you, Safrina. Because you mentioned earlier uh, about Indonesia's good effort during the pandemics, especially on the agricultural industry. What are actually the lessons learned for Indonesia in terms of food security and what are also the room for improvement that can be done for Indonesia for food security effort? I think the, the, the good lesson learned is like, you know, uh, giving agriculture as a priority and also a country with almost 70% of the farmers, the small producers are family farmers, you know, focusing on them, providing them or facilitating their access to credit, mm. you know, and, and not imposing higher level of restrictions. I think these are some of the good practices that Indonesia ensured during the pandemic. So the production continued mm -hmm. and the trade continued. Of course, you know, we could see, yeah. I, I was not there in Jakarta, unfortunately, at that time. Yeah. Uh, but I could, I, 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 what the basis I got was like, you know, the, uh, the, the policies that the government adopted or the Ministry of Agriculture adopted really helped facilitate the, the production and the business. So supporting an incentive yeah, for exactly. the farmers, yeah. yeah. Especially targeting the small farmers. You know, see, whenever a crisis hits, be that pandemic or natural disaster or whatever, it's always the small farmers and fishers yes. that face the largest very grunt, yeah. you know, because, and, and I have seen like when people are affected with disaster or this type of crisis, the needs are so much and incomes are less, Yes, you know, and they don't know which, what to cover. So that is the time when they need the support, the social protection scheme, for example, yeah. that Indonesia adopted, Yeah, you know. And, and the level of subsidy provided to these small farmers. Mm -hmm. I think these are the good practices. The lesson learned for what lesson that could happen yeah. in 2022. So, but looking forward toward 2023, what are what do you see are the challenge for Indonesia of implementing food security efforts? See, uh, the challenges are not only limited to Indonesia. Challenges are all over the world, you know, growing population, growing urban population. You know, yeah. uh, increasing prices of food, feed, fertilizer, as I said, the 5F crisis, yeah. you know, uh, uh, many countries uh, on, on, uh, under, under the international uh, financial debt, uh, in inflation, yeah. you know, um, devaluation of currencies. So these are the problems and these are the issues, challenges that countries would be facing also in 2023. And, and, and the conflict in Ukraine, it's so uncertain. We don't know. Yeah. I mean, thanks to this Black Sea Grain initiative that facilitated the access of wheat grains from Ukraine and Russia to different parts of the world, that has really helped, you know, calm yeah. down the situation and bring down the, 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 the wheat price. And Indonesia being a country yeah. also very much uh, dependent on imported wheat for, for uh, 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 and noodles. Uh, so but, that can be a good note for... Yeah, but, you know, I mean, now, actually, this, these are also some of the things that FAO uh, mentioned very clearly during G20, you know, mm. looking at the trade. Please keep the trade flow open. Not only the production. Not only the, the production. Trade. So yeah. that countries with larger, higher dependence on import can yeah. bring the food in. True. And now we, are, we also propose uh, mapping of land, mapping of soil, yeah. because people have the perception that more fertilizer you use, higher production you get. That's not true. Mm. You know, you have to actually optimize the use of fertilizer as yeah. per the soil type. And also for the soil. Yeah. For the soil type. So these are the initiatives that actually FAO yeah. provided. Because you also mentioned about the growing urban population yes. and also the use of uh, the right soil. Um, and also, you know, for growing urban population, it's very strongly correlated with the economic growth in, in, in any country. So along with the ambitions of countries to spur economic growth and proper, proper economic, you know, um, achievements, we see that agricultural land can be displaced by industrial, industrial ambition or industrial areas. What do you actually think about this? See, uh, it is, again, it's happening all over the world, right? You cannot compromise industrial growth, but... This is where we need to really look at targeting. And there are a lot of resources and, and, and tools available. And FAO has developed some tools mm -hmm. that really helps uh, the countries uh, to, to plan accordingly, you know, planning tools. Mm -hmm. and, and the planning should be done very targeted way and it should be very bottom-up approach. Okay. It should not be top-down. 
I mean, you cannot simply displace a population or deprive yeah, because then you want to build. Exactly, you want to build the industrial state. This yeah. is not going to work. Yeah. Probably that would bring more conflict. Yeah, you know. So we have to really look. The countries need to look at. Uh, again, I I come back to my word of holistic. Yeah, you know, we have to really look through the bottom up approach and how we can consult the people, how these people were brought on uh, on on board, especially women, youth. Yeah, you know, the younger generation. That is one thing. Industry so the key is to plan accordingly. Exactly. Then when you talked about urban population, I mean, if you see the train in mega cities, Jakarta, yeah. Manila, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur, you see the growth of urban population is higher and higher yeah. every yeah. day. Why? Because younger people are not interested to live in the villages. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So on one hand, you have challenges on urban food security. On the other hand, you have also challenges in emptying villages. In many countries. I'm thinking Philly. I'm thinking Philly. It's really nice. Young people are not staying back in the villages. Um, because you mentioned about it, do you see that young people, yeah, how actually young people can be encouraged to, you know, attracted to fit businesses, agriculture, industry, and so on? Because I personally see it as the future. I personally see it as the future. Going back again to the village hall holistically, despite so many challenges that happen in this world, industrial world, it's actually the future, going back again to the village, holistically lifted, agriculture sustainable. What do you think about it? See, I have, I have, I, once I met a, a young fisher who yeah. was going into the sea. A young fisher? A young fisher, a young boy uh, who has been fishing for like generations, okay? And he goes for blue crab. And when he catches the blue crab, he brings to the farm gate and the trailer comes from Jakarta and pays like 50,000 per kilo. In what area is this specific? Uh, it's say uh, uh, around Chiribon area. Okay, Chiribon. Chiribon. And then if the same blue crab comes to Jakarta after several grading and processing and all that, it can fetch as high as 1 million rupiah wow. per kg. Wow. So how can you convince the guy mm. who sells at 50,000 rupiah and same thing catches, fetches 1 million, One million. here, you know? So we have to make that more attractive and more profitable. Okay. Because unless these guys get the tools and techniques to bring value addition to their production or to their catches and get more money at the end of the day, they will not be interested to go for farming or fishing. Yeah. You know? So how do we make that? I yeah, think how, that is the how, how do we yeah. do it? Yes, there are some good practices. If you take the example of Japan or Italy, they have encouraged people giving incentives to go back to their villages. Mm. You know, provided they stay at least for five years. Italy is an example. They also have same problems. Yeah. So they are giving the incentive, they are even giving accommodations, but they have to go and do some business, whether it's food or business it. or production or whatever, you know? Plus, provide them with new tools and techniques, provide them with a, a digital technology and make agriculture or fishery more attractive. It's not only profitable, but also it should be attractive. For young people, they always want changes, right? And eventually it will be an answer to food security. Exactly. System. On one hand, you ensure the production yeah. because you have a lot of hungry mouths. Population is growing. You have to feed more and more people. Yeah. So you need to ensure yeah. production, but at the same time, you need to make it attractive and interesting so that these guys stay back in the field yes. or go back to water and continue. Yeah. That's how I see actually the future. Exactly. How, well, how do you feed them? Yeah. How do you? Feed you them? cannot. It's just... a growing urban population. Exactly. Yeah. I was in a forum and we were talking about the agriculture in the UK, and I raised the question saying, "It's great what UK is doing, but production in UK yeah. is more commercialized. Yeah. You don't need so many people. Whereas in our part of the world, we have more small farmers. Yeah. Still on that small farmers and also growing urban population, Indonesia." has put a lot of aggressive, aggressive ambition, constructions of industrial areas in Java, mm -hmm. in, in, mm -hmm. in the, the Java, uh, in the Java island. But the food estates, agricultural efforts are put outside in other islands, such as Borneo, Kalimantan, Mr. Rajendra. Mm -hmm. Do you think that those food estates um, placed in other islands of Indonesia outside Java can be compensating the industrial growths that happen in Java island? Uh, actually, we are we are working with Bob Penas on that, and this is again I come back to this agri food system transformation modeling. That that's the work that actually we are doing with Indonesia. So uh, I don't think I can answer your question directly, but what I have, I would like to say is that the tool that we are using with Bob Penas actually developing this agri food system transformation modeling, mm -hmm. starting at the central level and going to the provincial level, would definitely help us. You know, allocate the resources and allocate the land 
and so on properly. That would be a sort of like a solution. The solution for... Uh, well, solution means like that would be a sort of like a way forward, I would say. Way forward. Way forward. But BAPEN has, or has already have some strategic plans on it. Yes, exactly. So we are working together with BAPEN uh, If you recall, in 2021, there was, uh, in, in New York, there was a big conference in September 21 called UN Food System Summit Dialogue. Mm. And the countries uh, presented their national pathways. Yeah. And Indonesia presented the national pathways. Yeah, and BAPEN is taking the lead on that. You know, because Bapenas is also coordinating with different line ministries because food security, agriculture is not only the responsibility of one ministry, yeah. it goes across the ministries. So, and following that, uh, you know, food system summit uh, and then implementing the national pathways, we are working with Bapesa, Bapenas, Bapen. developing this uh, agri food system transformation modeling. And Indonesia is actually way ahead of the curve. Oh, yeah. This. Compared to? Compared to many other countries across okay. the globe. So, and this is another example that Indonesia is setting. Uh, so I hope that that modeling work will re definitely yield some good results. Yeah. The NTT is facing drought all yeah. the time. Yeah. You know, they have issues with water. Water scarcity is yeah. a problem. So the simple technology, it is, you know, going to the dry land, making holes without tilling, you know, using the organic mine manure and, wow, you know, and, 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 and uh, sowing um, corn seed and getting the production.